I've always really liked speakers, but I've never really known how they work. Like this mini boom. My wife and I have had it for like 10 years, but I don't really know how it works. So I thought, let's make a speaker and maybe we can kind of figure out how one like this works and then we'll compare our speaker to this one and see which is better. Here's a few of the supplies we're gonna need today. I'll be using magnets. This is my big magnet. It's a 40 by 20 millimeter neodymium magnet. It's really cool. Kind of got to be careful with it. Whoa! It, along with all the others, I'll link in the comments. So you can try all these yourself. I'll also be using these eight by three millimeter magnets. They're really fun and I use them for a whole host of projects. Then I also got some really good results from these magnets. <laughs> good, good, I got good results. They're pretty good results. They come apart, but they look like that. You'll also need some copper wire. This wire is a enamel coated wire, which is really important for projects like this. So the electricity will like jump between the wires and it's somewhere between 32 and 36 gauge. The marking rubbed off, so I'm not 100% sure. The nice thing about the smaller gauge wires is you can get a lot for not really very much money. Then for our speakers, since I'm a big Steve Mould fan, we'll make them clear. It's always fun to see through the project. A couple other things I'd suggest are getting a box of alligator clips. They make things like this way easier also. I wish I would have started using them a lot earlier. This is a little amp. I got it set up to my laptop here. And what this does is take the electrical signal and bump it up a little because the speakers that we're gonna make are gonna work a little bit, They're, they work but this is gonna make them work better. So I'm gonna really recommend getting one if you wanna to try to do speakers and have them be more satisfying. This is one of the like lower end Amazon basic speakers. I'll show it to you. Here's the model. Final thing, I think. Some of these little auxiliary cords, I'm gonna be using two of them. One connects to the computer and then one connects to our speaker. Gonna be really helpful. Get your cup. Get your wire. With our wire, we're gonna make a coil. So we need to choose which magnet we kind of want our coil to fit. I'm gonna choose a size that's kind of in the middle of all of them. In this test tube, you can see it is, it's bigger than these magnets, our eight by threes. It's a bit smaller than these and quite a bit smaller than our 40 by 20. But let's try it out and we'll see how it works. Leave yourself a pretty long end piece. I like to use about a foot of extra what I found happens is the alligator clips at the end, if the wire's too short, keep sticking to the magnets and it's just really annoying. So let's start wrapping. You can try different numbers of coils. Let's do like 30 wraps and just see how that goes. Thirty. And then get another foot or so. When the wire's on your Crayola marker or test tube or whatever you wrapped it on, it's gonna be nice and tight, but once you take it off, it's gonna wanna sort of get loose and fall apart. So what I do is just take another piece of wire and wrap it around. That helps hold the wire coil nice and tight. Let me do that now. This is about a bonus foot maybe. When it comes off, it gets all loose like this. So that's why we wrap it up. Oh, before I start wrapping it, I'm gonna take these two little bunny ears coming off the end, and I'm just gonna twist them. Forgot to do that when I was wrapping it. Okay, let's coil. Now, take everything I say about electricity and electronics with a grain of salt, because I'm learning a lot. <laughs> Definitely not a master of this. Electro Boom, he knows a lot about this. I'm just learning, I like learning. So I don't think the electricity passes through this wire that I'm wrapping around because it's coiled and it's not gonna be connected to the alligator clips. There's something about working with copper wire that's extremely satisfying. I don't know what it is. When you get near the end, you got this little dangler. I kind of just bend it so it's like a loop on one side and then the other side, I fold up and twist them. Look at that. Tony Stark's got nothing on us. Besides a few billion in an awesome suit. Once you have this, the final thing you need to do with the wire is because it's enamel coated, you need to burn off the ends. I'll try using a match and then we're gonna sand them down a little and I'll use steel wool. The enamel just burns right off. 
They're all black. So let's sand them down so we get that nice clean copper. This is just a little steel wool. Looks pretty good. Let's put on some alligator clips. Got them. I don't know if there's a way you're supposed to do this. There's a little hole right here and I put the wire through that hole and I put it right up to the edge of where I just sanded and I wrap it around a couple times to maximize the surface area on the alligator clip and then twist it. Do that same thing again. Now let's put our coil on the cup and we're done. I'd like this coil to be removable, so I'm gonna try putting it on with clay. You can use hot glue though, that works really well, but I'm just gonna try with clay on this one. Here's my clay. Let's make a little ring for our coil. There we go. And then we'll slap it on here. Here's what it looks like. Well, let me show you how to plug it in and we'll try it. We'll get our amp. Let's turn that on. What I'm gonna do is put one alligator clip at the very tip. And the other alligator clip, there's this black notch right here. And I'm gonna put the alligator clip below that. Right there. Sometimes you gotta mess with the alligator clips. All right, let's try. There's nothing. What are we missing? No magnets. All right, let's try the little magnets first. Ready? I hear it. Can you hear it? That's so cool. Let's try a bigger magnet. Here's one of our circle magnets. Ooh. Works pretty good. I can feel it moving in my hand. Sound is made by vibrations and the coil is moving because the electric current moving through it interacts with the magnetic field and feels a force. Okay, let's try our big magnet. Here's a 40 by 20. Doesn't sound too much louder than the other one. Certainly louder than the small one. That's really cool. Okay, let's do a quick comparison. Big magnet. One with the ring. About the same. Interesting. Let's try a different cup. Here's a very similar setup, but this time I put the screw in the big magnet and it's sitting on top of the copper coil. Let's try that. You ready? Whoa. That's quite a bit better. That's really cool. So this cup's working a little better. The coil is a little bigger on this one. So maybe the coil matching the size of the magnet helped a little bit too. Do a dangly speaker. Works a little better. My hand doesn't dampen the vibrations. Let's try a paper bowl. Here's a paper bowl and it has a small coil that fits our eight by three millimeter magnets. Let's try that one. Ooh. That sounds pretty good. The paper works well. They kind of just started mowing outside. So <laughs> we'll get that a little bit too. That's nice. Let's try this setup with a little bit bigger coil that'll match our other magnets. Here's that same setup, but we have our little bit larger magnet with the hole in it. And this time what I did, you can try this, it's just held on by a small magnet in the front. Whoa. That's really good. 
Just the magnet on the back there. Magnet and a coil and a wire. And a plate and an amplifier. <laughs> and a few other things. Alligator clips. Since the bowl's working the best, let's try this with a bigger wire that matches our big magnet. This bowl has a bigger wire that'll match our bigger magnet. Let's try it. Let's see. Whoa. That's the best yet. <laughs> and the bull's vibrating in my hand. It's so cool. Wow. And what could we do to make it even louder? I got some ideas. I'm gonna do some follow-up videos. Let's check and see how this one compares to our mini boom now. Who do you think's gonna win? Today's Science Living sponsor is Exter. They make these super cool thin wallets that I think are rad. Check it. I don't think I've ever liked a wallet this much. Go to the library, boom, first card. Slide it out, I'll take my free book. Flip it over the back and check this out. You have this rad RFID blocking card that makes it harder for people to skim your credit card information. So you don't have your credit card information end up on an annoying auction site online. And if you happen to be prone to losing your wallet, you can get one of these GPS trackers that's pretty thin, so it doesn't take up much space. And right behind that, you got all this space. If you happen to have money, you could put money back there or more cards. I keep a little family photo. There's me, there's our cat. Extra's doing a Father's Day sale right now, so if you want to get one of these for your dad, you can. You get a huge discount if you type in code FLIMDOG when you get to checkout. Just click the link in the description, and remember to type in code FLIMDOG once you've got your awesome Extra wallet. This one I really like. It's really high-grade aluminum, and it does all the cool little Extra functions. Get one for your dad, and he's gonna love it. Let's get back to our experiment. Okay, here it goes. Let's see how this one sounds. <laughs> okay, it's a little better. Good, let me show you a real winner though. All right, that's nothing. That's nothing. Here's how you do it, speaker. Yeah, take that, mini boom. <laughs> okay, so the mini boom works better, but this is so much cooler. You gotta try it. Wow. So what have we learned today? The magnet size is important. The bigger magnets seem to work better, but the coil size to match the magnet is also important. A coil that's about the same size as the magnet tends to also work better. The other thing that matters is the number of coils. We didn't get into that a great deal, but we can maybe mess around with that a little bit next time. Until then. <laughs> wonder, oh wonder.